Hi, uh, topic today is AVL trees in our course data structures. Uh, so this is a binary search tree basically with a balance condition, uh, meaning that uh, in this special binary search tree for any node the height of the left and the right left subtree and the right subtree can differ by at most one okay so zero is okay one is okay but two and more is not okay so to uh, digest this definition we first need to remember our height definition which is the length of the longest path from root to a leaf okay so for this tree for instance uh, i have three leaves not this node one three and eight but from root I need to select the longest path, so I will select this leaf, and the length of the path is the number of edges on it. So in this case, it would be one, two, three. So the height of this tree is three. Uh, but this height definition is for any node, basically. If you take this subtree, what is the height of this subtree? Then you will take the height of this node. What is the height of this node? One, two. Okay. Similarly, for this subtree, height of this node is zero. Only one node it comes with the height of zero and for a non for a null tree for an empty tree the height would be defined as minus one which will make sense later okay so with that in mind this tree for instance is not an avl tree because for for this sub for this node the definition works just fine because the height of the left subtree is zero the height of the right subtree is one because of this edge and zero one is acceptable one difference uh, similarly, for this node, it is okay because height of the left subtree is minus one now, and right is minus one. Difference is zero. But for this node, I have a trouble. Height of the left subtree is one, two, and height of the right subtree is zero. Okay, this subtree. So it is not forbid. It is not allowed. It is not an AVL tree. By the way, AVL stands for the names of in, initials of the inventors of this tree. Okay, that's a fun fact. Okay, so with this height balance, we achieve a nice binary search tree. Okay, so uh, here uh, in the left, I see an AVL tree uh, because for any nodes, like take this node, uh, the definition holds the deviation between left and right heights is at most one. This is the definition. So for this node, the left subtree has a height of zero okay only one node and the right subtree has a height of minus one zero and minus one okay this sub uh, this a uh, this tree is still a binary search tree and by the way just remember that definition as well for a binary search tree for any node all the smaller values go to the left subtree of it and all the biggers go to the right subtree of it okay and if you accept Duplications, then you may select uh, equals go to left as well or right. It is not a real rule for the duplications, but the idea is the small guys go to the left, the big guys go to the right. So this is a binary search tree, okay? But it is not an AVL tree because of this node, and you will. Uh, this node is also not okay, but only one node is enough to declare it as a non-AVL tree. So in this node I have a left subtree which is coming with a height of 2 and the right subtree is coming with a height of 0. Not okay. okay. Uh, so if we keep things balanced, so left height and right height are uh, as close as possible to each other, like 0 or 1, 1 is still okay, uh, then you will end up with a minimum height tree. So in the previous trees lecture, I have shown you that this is the minimum height, uh, the minimum tree uh, of height uh, will be logarithmic in the number of nodes. Okay, log n. So uh, we have proven this, but let me give you the intuition here as well for com completeness. So assume you have 16 nodes to begin with, then you distribute 8 to left and 8 to right and similar heights uh, and then for for this 8 I will have 4 4 
and other four for for the other eight. So uh, if I go in this uh, nicely distributed manner, in the next layer I will have two 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 two. I will have eight twos, totaling to sixteen. And in the next level I will have once. I have sixteen of them, and then I I stop because I can't go further. One is the unit. I can't decompose it anymore. So what just happened is uh, I began with 16 nodes and I uh, divided by 2 at every layer. So, and in the end I hit the uh, <coughs> problems with only one node, which are the leaves. So this is the definition of logarithm. Number of uh, times you need to divide a number by 2 until you reach number 1. Okay, so in this case it would be 4. You need 4 divisions, hence log 16, base 2 of course, is 4. Okay, uh, so keeping 3 balanced is good. It will make your height log n even in the worst case because you have this nice left and right distribution. And height is related to every operation in binary search trees. Like if you want to find something, in the worst case, you will go from root until the leaf, okay? Because the thing you find can be in the leaf, and maybe it doesn't exist. Then you still have to reach your leaf to exit the tree. Uh, and f insert and removal depends totally on uh, find operation, because for insert you try to find that value, and once you can't find it, you just insert it right there. And for delete again, you need to find it. To delete it first. So all the three basic operations, find, insert and remove, depends on height and it would be log n in our AVL tree, uh, worst case log n. Uh, so the height, again this is uh, a nostalgia from our previous video, but if you are not careful with the height balancing, then this is also a binary search tree, so I just add bigger and bigger numbers, so they all go to right. So the height of this tree is terrible. I have n nodes and the height is n minus 1. It's like a linked list. So now I need to make 1, 2, 3, uh, n. So it, it goes like this in the general case, dashed lines here. Uh, so you need to look at n nodes to decide whether something is inside your tree or not. Uh, okay, so this, this is... Height can be... Uh, on in the worst case if you don't do any self-balancing if you don't take any precautions but with the topic today with the AVL tree this height will be forbidden by definition so the height will be in the worst case login hence all the operations will be in the worst case login okay with a regular binary search tree they are login in the best case if you are lucky but now I take luck out of consideration so okay let's do some concrete steps towards this balancing uh, so I have I will have five four cases but before them let, let me just animate the stuff for you a little bit uh, uh, if I can animation here uh, okay so this thing so here we are constructing a binary search tree so there will be rotations to balance the tree okay and this is uh, a good animation about it. What I mean by rotation is this. So here a tree that is not balanced because the left height is minus 1, right height is 1. Uh, so what I mean by rotation is the following. Yes, so just like you rotate stuff. Okay, so I think it gives the idea. So let's not lose any more time. So there will be cases. Let's proceed with them. Uh, let's uh, let me not read here, and I will show you them in action. So the first case is what I call LL. So so in this case, this is the trouble problematic node, right? Because the height difference between this thing and this is more than two, more than one. It is two basically. So but there is no problem here because when I consider this part. I don't even see this part, so A, B, they are compatible, one difference is okay. So this is the problematic node. So what is the problem? I did bet, I did something bad to the left child of it, 
and I attack the left subtree of that child. Hence, I call it LL. Uh, and when you have LL, you need a right rotation. So you can just remember, memorize it like this. LL goes to R. Similarly, this metric case will be RR, and then you would be doing a left rotation. But let, let's go step by step. So what do I mean by the right rotation? So it goes like this. K1 sinks K2 down, which comes with C as a package. Now the left of K2 will be right of K1, which is E. And then I don't touch at all to the left of K1, which was A, I guess. Hence, you have this uh, result, which is written in a more careful way here. Yeah, so that is the idea. And just I mentioned the other case is the symmetric one, RR. So here, this is the problematic case. So I did something bad to the right child by attacking the right subtree of it. Okay, then I would be needing a left rotation. So let's do a left rotation. K2 sinks K1 down, which comes with A automatically, naturally, you don't do anything. Now this is the tricky part. K1 dot right will be K2 dot left, which is B. And again, I don't touch the right of K2 at all, which is C. Okay, so they are Okay, so this is the configuration. Uh, let's see this in action uh, as well. Uh, in this case, so I want to insert one. I will do a regular insertion. One is smaller than 12, go left, go left, go left. Smaller than two, go to left. I insert it here. So, so far everything is exactly what we studied uh, previous week, the binary search tree insertion. Then, there is no problem here because left subtree has height zero, right subtree has height minus one. There is no problem here, left subtree has height one, right subtree has height zero. But there is a problem here because left subtree has height one, two, right subtree has height zero. So what is the problem? So I detected this as the problematic node. I did something bad to the left child by attacking the left subtree of it. So this is a left subtree. I could have inserted a value to the right part of it as well. The same deal. Nothing changes. Hence, I call it the left subtree. Okay, so again, left child, left subtree. You need a right rotation. Let's do that. Uh, K1, which is 4, sinks 8 down, which comes with 10 as a package. And now 8 dot left will be 4 dot right, which is 6. And by the way, here is a nice tip for you. This is a binary search tree after all, right? So you should check the binary search tree condition, which is what uh, all the bigger, big ones go to the right of the uh, node. So for 8, smaller, bigger. For 4, so something here cannot be 3 or something. Then it will violate with 4, right? So you should always verify your steps. Anyway, let's continue. So for sinks 8 down which comes with 10 then 8 dot left is 4 dot right and I don't touch the left of 4 at all which is 2 and 1 which is a newcomer so this is this has reshaped this part and this is connected to above I haven't touched anything above so everything here is just copy pasted which happens to be 16 and then 14 so see this is a clear version of that uh, we have a nice shape uh, by nice I mean height balance okay another example uh, so if we do it one by one I would end up with that tillery that came from the sky let's make it so 3 2 1 would make this right first 3 then I have a 2 so far so good then when 1 comes there is a problem at this node because height of left sub 3 is 1, right sub 3 is minus 1. So I need a right rotation because LL case. So it would, 2 will sink 3 down, 3 dot left will be 2 dot right which is nothing, so I do nothing and 2 dot left stays as is. Then 4 through 7, so 4 comes here without any problem, 5 comes here with a problem. 
here is the problematic node right right case so in left rotation would do what four will sink three down uh, and three dot right will be four dot left which is nothing and four dot right is intact maintained so this part has been reshaped so it is just connected above and by the way we will see the code of this as well so don't worry it is also simple so it is that one then six when I insert six here no problem here but I say problem here so what is the problem right I did something bad to the right child by attacking the right subtree of it so I could have inserted again 4.5 here still the same case so I need a left rotation which will do what 4 will sink 2 down which comes with 1 as a package but 2 dot right will be 4 dot left which is 3 again this is a binary search tree rule 4 and 3 and 4 dot right is intact 5 and 6 okay and finally we have 7 in our lives which comes here I have a problem here so it will do what 6 will sink 5 down and 6 dot right will be intact so this part has just been reshaped so I will copy paste it to my 4 above so for a better view we should just look at this output so the rotation itself is a constant time operation because what I do is basically uh, setting some pointers like k1 dot uh, what is that k1 dot right is k2 dot left etc so just in the trouble region but the insertion itself takes log n time it, it takes you it, from the root to the leaf which can be in the worst case in log n depth okay that's why the operations here are all logarithmic I have two more cases by the way it's not over yet so but these are just doubling the number of rotations the rotation ID is the same so don't worry about it so if this is the case so again this is the problematic node I did something bad to the left child by attacking the right subtree of it now be careful I have a non-symmetric case LR, LR so this calls for two rotations and I memorize it like this previously when it was LL I did the opposite rotation like right rotation but when I have a hybrid situation you go with the ordering so L means first left rotation and then right rotation left rotation will not consider the troublemaker node uh, and the right rotation will consider the troublemaker node so it will be clear in the next slide I think because here we are just showing you the wrong approach so for instance if this is the case where Q and R are inconsistent if you try to do a right rotation so K1 will sink K2 down which comes with R and K2 dot left will be K1 dot R so Q and K1 dot left is intact now Q and R problem is fixed wonderful but there is a new problem arise which is PQ so this is not the solution okay so we, we should rely on this slide actually for that problem so let me repeat that thing again okay so this is the problematic note because for instance for this part there is no problem all the heights are uh, less than or equal to one but there is a problem here because of D and B or D and C so the problem is I did something bad to my left child by attacking my right subtree and then I can go to either left of the right subtree or right of the right subtree. I don't care about that. So again, just I mentioned before, I need two rotations. First L, left, and then right rotation. Left rotation will not consider the troublemaker, not K3. It will consider the others, K1 and 2, 1, 2. And then I will do the rare rotation that puts K3 into consideration and then its immediate neighbor so it will be 2 k2 so the, the thing is you will use k3 and its immediate neighbor which is either k1 or k2 but I think it was k2 but again you don't have to memorize this, this part you have to put k3 and its immediate neighbor so let's see if it fixes first I do a left rotation without the k3 so on this part so let's do a left rotation 
K2 will sink K1 down which comes with A as a package and then K1 dot right will be K2 dot left which is B and K2 dot right I don't touch it at all which is C so this guy is done so this part is done uh, it was connected to K3 which has a D on the right now I will do the right rotation considering K3 and its immediate neighbor which is K2 so I wrote it correctly so now I will do a right rotation let me do it K2 will sink K3 down which comes with D as a package automatically but K3 dot left will be K2 dot right which is C and K2 dot left is intact which is what K1 and its uh, children A and B and for a better drawing you should refer to here so the, see there is no height problem here uh, okay so this is just repeating uh, le let's put this in action uh, and by the way just like I have done LR case here left right there is also the symmetric RL case that we will probably see later but I should mention it here anyway in this case first you will do right rotation then left rotation and this rotation will keep K3 in mind okay so here let's do this uh, thing this is the f 5 has been inserted uh, so I did something bad to the left child by attacking the right subtree of it so LR case I will first do an L rotation and then right rotation. L will not consider K3, so I will do the left rotation in this region. Let's do it. 6 will sink 4 down, which comes with 2 as a package, and 4 dot right will be 6 dot left, which is 5. And again, binary search rule applies. 6 smaller guys go to left. And 6 dot right is intact, which is null, so I don't put it. So this thing is connected above which was 8 so everything here is just copy paste and 12 and then we have some 16 and finally I have a 14 here and then it is not over what is over is this first step I need double rotation, two rotations so the second rotation will keep the troublemaker and its immediate neighbor which was called K2 so and it is time to do right rotation so 6 will sink 8 down which comes with 10 as a package and 8 dot left will be 6 dot right which is nothing and 6 dot left is intact so it comes with 4 and the subtree uh, 4 is a subtree with some content below it so this is the case that fixes this part and this part must be connected above because nothing has happened so this is that edge 12 16 14 so 12 16 14 so I, I won't draw it again so this is the result that you can see here uh, okay so RL rotation the symmetric case is also introduced here so uh, what just happened here is uh, I did something bad to my right child by attacking the left subtree RL case so first you will do a right rotation without K1 the troublemaker and then you will do a left rotation with K1, the troublemaker. Okay, let's do insertions in a real world example. Uh, so we will continue from this uh, result obtained during our single rotation uh, practice. So then I will insert 16 to this, which will go to right, right, right. So it will come here without any balance problem because all the balances are compatible at this point for each node now 15 comes right 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 15 is less than 16 so it comes here and I now detect a case uh, a bad case which is uh, an unbalanced height situation at this node because height of the right subtree is 1 left subtree is minus 1 because it's a null empty subtree and minus one one has a difference of two which is unacceptable so what just happened is I did something bad to my right child by attacking its left subtree 
RL case which calls for a double rotation with a right without seven troublemaker in my life and then a left rotation with the troublemaker in the life. So let's do the right rotation first without seven. So I will take this and this. So this subtree will be attacked. So right rotation, 15, 6, 16 down. And it is all there is actually. It's a very simple case, two nodes. So this is done. Right rotation is done. Which was connected above seven and this is also connected above to six etc so but i am not over i need to do a left rotation on this part so let's do the left rotation basically 15 will sink seven down and seven dot right will be 15 dot left which is nothing and 15 dot right is maintained as is okay so this is over left is also over i am done what i need to do next is redraw the tree basically Okay, because nothing has happened above this node. So what was it? Six. I have five here, uh, which has a four in the root. Comes with two, so I am trying to draw it as good as possible with one and three. So let's have a quick look. Is it balanced? Yes. So this tree, although not very clear, but it is height balance as you can see. Let me do one more insertion, maybe or two. Uh, so let's don't see here. 14 comes. 14 is bigger, bigger, bigger. Now 14 is smaller than here. Come to left, then go to right. So 14 will get here. Is there a problem? No problem at this node. Is there a problem here? Y yes, yes, there is. Because the right subtree has height 2, 1, 2. Left subtree has height 0. 0 2 difference is 2 unacceptable what just happened is I did something bad to my right child by attacking its left subtree so it is the same case so I will do first right rotation then left rotation first rotation will not keep this troublemaker in uh, consideration will not keep that in consideration so I will do a right rotation around here with this guy and this guy so what will that give me? 7 will sink 15 down, which comes with 16 as a package. And now 15 dot left will be 7 dot right, which is 14. And again, this obeys the binary search tree rule. So you should verify it uh, in, on the fly. Okay, so I have finished the right rotation, which was connected above. With a six and now this is the troublemaker remember and this is the immediate neighbor now it is time to do a left rotation so seven will sink six down to the right of six i will have left of seven which is nothing so do nothing and right of seven stays as is so 15 and then 15 has also other connections which is just maintained automatically i don't Actually anything here okay so this is it basically all this part with uh, the six seven so all these four nodes are now set accordingly uh, and by the way there was six had this connection to five which has nothing to do with the rotation region so it is just maintained automatically so I, let me just put it here as well so all this part is now reshaped okay so i need to connect it back to above which has a four here and to the left of four we had what so where is that thing i had two one three i had two one and three so so far, this is the tree. 4, 2, 1, 3, 7, 6, 15, perfectly balanced. And I have one more layer, which is still okay. So this tree is perfectly balanced. Uh, and I have inserted all guys up to this point, okay? So if you continue with all the other insertions, you will end up with this thing. Let's stop here. So 
as far as implementation goes, we will keep this AVL node class, which has left and right pointer and an element, the node value, as well as the height of it, which is very important. For a node without any connections, by default, nothing below it, so height will be zero by default. If the node that I am looking for is null, basically an empty tree, then height should be minus one. Otherwise, I will return t dot height, whatever the height value is, and that value will be maintained, uh, initialized, uh, has been initialized, but it will be updated properly in the insert function. To go there, I first need to prepare my rotation functions, which are constant time operations. See, uh, so this is all one time. There is not no for loop, etc. What you need to do is so this is for the case one, which was LL, right? LL situation. I did something bad to my left child by attacking its left subtree. So this calls for a right rotation. So I have called this right rotation, but the book calls something else. So let's go with our notation, which is right rotation, R right rot or something. Uh, so it will get this K two as the troublemaker node and be careful there is some call by reference happening here meaning that so k2 is probably a left child or right child of some let's make it a left child of somewhere some some other node so this is basically if this node is called a a dot left is k2 okay so once i reshape my topology here uh, the k2 will be updated to something else so in the end it will be k1 but since i am doing call by reference here i dot left a, a dot left sorry will be this k1 so this is call by reference is useful to connect the resulting tree rotated tree to the above layer okay so it just happens naturally thanks to the call by reference so this is just a technical but important detail now let's do the rotation so again, this is the K2. You decide your K1 uh, with your code. So now I set this as K1, okay? Because I will do a right rotation, I need K1. So right rotation does the following, right? Uh, K1, I am repeating this. K1 will sink K2 down, whose left will be K1 dot right. So K2 dot left will be k1 dot right which is b so this is happening here be careful k2 dot left is equal to k1 dot right so i just set this connection i have already done this now let's proceed k1 dot right is normally b but i don't want it i want k1 dot right to point to k2 okay so this is just happened with this execution Basically, topology is over because k1 dot left is a. It was already a. I don't do any update. Okay. Similarly, k2 dot right is c. It it was already c. No update. But I need to update heights because some action has happened. So k2 dot height uh, will be. So this is the height definition. It will have two subtrees: left subtree and right subtree. I will learn their heights with this function that we have just seen before uh, and then I will add one to it because uh, if you recall our previous class to get the height of this node it has this left subtree and it has this right subtree uh, so if the height of left subtree is 7 and this is 6 then I will take the bigger one this one and I will also connect it above using one edge, one connection, so it will be one plus seven, which is the max of the uh, children. Okay, so this is coming from there. Similarly, k1 dot height should be updated because it is a totally different below now. And finally, this is also important. Be careful. K2 was the connection for a, so a knows k2. But now when I update k2 to k1. A will point to this new K1 because of call by reference. Okay, so everything is connected to the above. Okay, right rotation is done. How about left rotation? It is implemented 
so it is which case? Case two. What was this case? I did something bad to my left client by attacking his right subtree LR. So in our notation, we had we first need to do left rotation uh, without K3. Okay, with K1. So with one and two. And then I will need to do a right rotation with K3, okay, and its immediate neighbor, whatever it is. So, okay, let's see how the code does it. Uh, first, so this will be the left rotation call. And remember, this is our right rotation syntax class. I called it right rot in the previous slide, if you remember. So first, the left rotation without K3, be careful k3 dot left so basically you feed k1 here and within the left uh, rotation function it will declare k2 manually inside that function then it will do the left rotation once it is done so i am done with this then it will come and do the right rotation using k3 and remember k3 will learn its left k1 by just in this first line Okay, so everything will be like that. Now let's keep everything together by this insertion function, which will basically call either single rotation or double rotation based on the case. So first of all, don't see the black, uh, blue parts because it, the other parts are copy pastes from my binary search tree insertion function. It is exactly the same. So if you want to insert one, okay, one is less than, so x is one, okay. 1 is less than 12, so do the insertion in the left part, so skip all the right subtree in one shot. Then 8, 1 is smaller, go to left, 1 is smaller, go to left. Now be careful, I am at node 2, so t is 2, x is still smaller than that, so I will call insert with 1, and 2 dot left is null, be careful. So I will land here because T is null. So I create this new node and I connect it uh, above. So two dot left is now one. So this is now set. And I am done because it was the last call. So it was executed here. So that insertion is done. Now it will come to the AVL stuff. So for this node, Look at the height difference between left and right subtree, which is height of left is minus 1, empty, height of right is minus 1. Remember, I have this function in two or three slides before. It is a one-line function, returning minus 1 if uh, the input is null, and returning t dot height, which will be set here in a second. Anyway, so for this thing, there is no difference of 2, so do nothing. That recursion dies, so I am done with this. Now come back here, which is the most recent recursion for this guy. And by the way, be careful as I go out. So the recursion goes out from this loop. I am still doing one, not one. It also comes here. Be careful because it's not inside the parentheses or anything. It needs to execute here as well when the recursion is about to quit. So what it does is height of left is minus 1, right is minus 1, max is minus 1, plus 1, so height of this node is set as 0, so I will just put a 0 here. See, t dot height is set within the insert function, just I promised you. Now, this is my most recent recursion, 2. <clears throat> what is the height of the left subtree? It is 0, I just set it. Height of the right subtree is minus 1 by definition. Difference is no 2, uh, not 2. So no problem, no rotation. Just come here, don't do here, but you need to do here. So set your height to 1, because what? 0 and minus 1, 0 from left, minus 1 from right. I will keep the max, 0 and plus 1. So let me put a 1 height here. This is the most recent recursion, I of 4 something. I of this block. What is that block? Left subtree, height 1, I just set it. Right subtree, which was this guy, it was already set when I have inserted 6, so it was 0. 1 and 0, no difference, no bad difference, so do nothing. And again, set the height of it to 
what 1 is the max, 1 plus 1 is 2. So height of this node is 2, which makes sense. See below, it is 2. Now, it is interesting at this iteration. Uh, I owe something to this recursion call with, uh, with 8 in the uh, T part, T node part. So, be careful. Left subtree has a height of 2. Right subtree has a height of 0. There is a problem. Okay? 2 is the difference. So, the x that I have used was 1. It is less than 4. Meaning that I have gone to the left subtree. So, this is the left subtree. But before... I was here, this means that I was in the left child, so I am in the LL case. Okay, so let me repeat. X was less than element, so I went to L. And here, X is less than the left element, so I went to the left subtree of that child, so LL case. It calls for right rotation, so you will call this right rotation function, which we called right rot. And the book calls something different, but it doesn't really matter. So, what if uh, I have inserted to the right subtree, then what would happen? L, so X is smaller, so I went to the left child, and here X is bigger. Be careful, this is the X is bigger case, so go to right. So I have LR case, which calls for a double rotation, which I just implemented, okay? So this is the idea. All right, uh, deletion is uh, carried on with a regular BST deletion, and then you classify the balance and balancing situation based on our cases, then act accordingly. Sometimes there won't be any unbalanced situation anyway. Uh, and we, again, it will be log n because of the height bound log n. So let me just go through it example here so if you do a I think I need to delete 8 from this tree okay so these are not nodes these are just nulls okay don't worry about them just consider the nodes with a value in it in them so when you delete 8 you will bypass it right so 9 will just connect to 7 this is BST deletion rule Again, if you want to delete 7, you just kill it. You have 9, 8. It is BSD deletion. Uh, so, leaf deletion is as simple as that. Just delete it. Node with one child deletion is again simple. Just bypass it. So, 8 has a one child. Has one child. Bypass 8, 9 to 7. Okay. We have studied this in BSD lecture. Node with two children, however, is a little bit tricky. So, like, if you delete... 9, it has two children, 8 and 15. You will replace 9 with the largest of the right left subtree or the smallest of the right subtree. So you which is 10 here. You can put 10 here and delete this leaf. Okay. Or you can put the largest of the left, which is 8. You can put 8 here and delete this node. So these are just recap for you for regular deletion. Again, let's come back to AVL stuff. If I delete 8, I bypass it, so I end up with this configuration. So this is regular. Now the AVL stuff. Is there a problem here? Yes, there is. Because not in this node, but right in this node I have a problem. Because the height of right subtree is 1, 2. Height of left subtree is 0. So I did something bad to my right child by attacking its left subtree. <clears throat> RL case. I need to do first right rotation without the troublemaker 9 and then left rotation with the troublemaker 9. So this is the right and this is the first node of the left subtree. So first do a right rotation around here. What would that give me? 13 will sink 15 down which comes with 20 as a package and 15 that left is 13 dot right which is nothing so I don't put and 13 dot left is 10 okay I just put it it is over basically the right rotation is done so let's remember the above layer which has 9 here and 7 here but I need I owe you a left rotation with that in mind and the immediate neighbor so left rotation 
would do what? 13 will sink 9 down, which comes with 7 as a package, and 9 dot right will be 13 dot left, which is 10. And right of 13 is intact, 15 followed by a 20, and this is perfectly balanced. So this is a better uh, picture here, okay? And you can do more examples on that. So now enough with the uh, <coughs> regular services like insertion and deletion. Uh, let me show you some applications. So this is not quite an application, but uh, still, if your input is a regular input, like a sorted array, they don't have to be consecutive, like it can be 10, this can be 21, 30, 40, 52, 63, 77, etc. Anything. The thing is, they need to be uh, sorted, so let me just go on with the original one. So, how to get the BST out of it without any rotation stuff? Idea is take the middle element, make it the root of your binary search tree, and recursively do the same to the left and right child. So let's do it. I have a smaller array. Recursively means that take the middle of it, make the root, and recursively do the left and right, create the left and right uh, binary search trees. Again, for the right, 6 is the middle of this block, uh, and I will call these guys. So again, let's come back here. 2 left sub tree is only one element if it is one element it is the base case you can quit just put it here without any further recursion and basically this is what you get okay per perfectly balanced tree at all times because of the nature of the input it's a sorted input you are not always that lucky your input isn't stated in the beginning normally it is dynamic nodes come and go so this is a uh, very uh, lucky case and very less realistic case okay this uh, uh, it's an input to a binary search tree or a, a tree is not in general defined in the beginning okay so but still it's good f for your practice of recursion or uh, other stuff and by the way this is the code of it what i just mentioned here select the middle element make it the root and then call the function recursively be careful this is the same function with a sub problem running from 0 to middle minus 1 so in this case here and running from middle plus 1 to the end then they will also call it uh, so the binary search tree created in this manner will be the left child of this root etc here is a tricky question uh, here is a nice question um, also, uh, it, in this one we will be testing whether a given binary tree is balanced or not. Okay. Uh, so uh, the idea goes like this: uh, you are at a given node, and the height difference should be at most one. This is the rule. So let's implement this logic. Uh, first of all, a tree that doesn't exist is balanced automatically so we return it now when I am at this node I look at the height of the left subtree okay and height of the right subtree if there is a problem between these heights if the height difference is a lot then you don't even do any recursion you quit from here and you return zero you tell that I have one terrible node uh, that prevents balanced tree so you just returns false but in this example for instance uh, there is no bad height difference because height of the left sub tree will be 2 and right will be 1 so I will then test I need to test recursively the balance situation in the left sub tree as well as in the right sub tree okay so even if this node is balanced there may be problems below and in this example I put it like this on purpose because here there is a problem here. So when I call this function with the node 8 here, uh, again it's not null, so left subtree height will be 1 because left subtree is this and right subtree is null by definition, height is minus 1, 
So the difference will be 2, which is not less than 1, uh, less than or equal to 1. So I will quit the balance function with a false because of this node. I don't do the rest at all. Uh, okay, so this is the logic. Uh, what I owe you is this height function. Uh, so why it re has returned 2 here. Uh, we have actually uh, wrote this function in the trees lecture previous but to keep things uh, complete here let me just write a quit height function here for you uh, in, let's let's call it h it will give me the height of this node pointer to this node called uh, root or r so basically height of two three rooted at r you can also read it like this. So first of all, if this root is, if this node is uh, null, if it is null, so this is a shortcut for it, if r doesn't exist, then I return minus 1. It is the definition of my uh, height function. Otherwise, so so let, let's stick with this node, okay? So I will get the, basically it looks lo very like to this uh, logic here i will get the height of the left subtree let me call it lh left height recursively so call h function using r dot left r uh, arrow left child so let's just write la le and i also need right height which will be computed recursively using the same function I am in, which is h. And the tricky part is I will feed the right child of r to this function. So they will learn their values and in the end I will return, I will take the max of these two uh, information, which is l h light uh, left height and the right height uh, and I will connect it above by using plus one so because given a node the height of this node would there will be a left subtree here and there will be a right subtree here if this left subtree has height 7 and this has height 5 the height of this node will be 8 why because I will select this one it will dominate and there will be plus one to connect this guy to the current node. Okay, height would be eight in this case. So let's just trace this code to verify if it's correct or not. Again, for eight, so right, anyway, left height is, I will call uh, left height recursively. So I will learn the height of this node. I don't know it yet, I will just call it. So this will call, so. 4 comes here, it will call uh, the same function using this dot left, using 2, what is the height of 2, I don't know, uh, also it will call this function right height. So this node now 2 comes here, 2 isn't null, so I don't do anything, but now uh, I it will call 2 dot left Okay, two dot left. It will call the height function on a null value also for the right child. So when the input is null, it just returns minus one. Okay, I have a scalar output, no recursion. So for here I have minus one. So let me write here. And for right child I have minus one. Okay. So these recursions for two have ended with minus one here and minus one here. I just showed you. But the 2 isn't over yet. It comes here now. What is the max of minus 1, minus 1? It is minus 1. Okay. Plus 1. I need to make this connection to above using plus 1. So it makes the height of 2 0. Okay. This is how I operate. With the same logic, height of this node will be 0. And with the same logic, when remember I have fed 4 here at some point in the recursion so let's go back to that time when 4 was here there was recursive calls to the left child and to the right child so those recursive calls now gave me a scalar output which is 0 here and 0 here so 
if I come back here, I have max of zero zeros plus one, so it learns the height of four as one. Now come back to the original question, height of eight. So from the left height, it has learned the value of one because I just set it here one for not four. So let me write it in big one uh, from the left. From the right, it calls this function right here. Uh, but luckily, uh, it, it will just finish immediately because calling eight on eight dot right, which is null, so I will call here with a null, and when r is null, it will just return minus one. Okay, so I will learn a minus one here from here. So now, what is the max of one and minus one? It is one, and I will also add another one to make the upper connection. So height of eight is two. So okay, this function works. We just verify that. And with that in mind, let me just quickly summarize the is balanced function. You will look at the left height, which is using this function we just implemented. You will look at the right height. If the difference of the left and right are acceptable, then you will proceed with the uh, left node situation and right node situation. So again, in this example, I put it on purpose, so let's clear everything and let's begin from here. Uh, when the recursion is here, uh, the left height would be 2 and right height would be 1. So there will be no problem for this node. But, so it will survive this statement. However, I have ended it with two other recursive calls because it is. It may not be enough, and in this example, it is not enough actually. Look at the balance situation of eight and sixteen. Sixteen is okay, but when I was executing this uh, recursion, I will get a false eventually because this part is not balanced. Height of left and right subtree. Uh, so this absolute value statement will be two when I was executing this. Because height of left sub three is one, and height of left right sub three is minus one, so okay, that's why I need recursion here. Uh, again, a verification problem. You are given another binary tree. Again, uh, now I want you to tell me whether it is a binary search tree or not. Okay. So the idea is I will maintain these ranges, a range with every node. Uh, initially it is a very flexible range, I accept everything in my root. So this range must, uh, every node must respect the range we gave to them. So if the root is null, return true, it is for an empty tree, it is binary search tree. So in this case I am at so I begin here with 12, the node 12. Uh, so 12 is within this interval, right? Range. It, is it smaller than the minimum possibility? If yes, then it is not in the range. So, But luckily it is inside, so there is no problem. Uh, I don't return this. I survive. So this node is okay. But I need to recursively do the test the left and right subtrees. So for the left subtree, be careful, I call this function using the left subtree, so which is 8, but no date. But be careful, the legs, uh, the minimum range doesn't change because I can put anything here. Uh, there is no limit in the lower bound. However, the node here must not exist, exceed 12. So I can't put 15 here by the binary search tree rule. So I will feed root.element here. So this is the tricky part. Root.element is currently 12. So the interval here I am looking for is minus infinity to 12. So in this example when 8 is fed, the input would be minus infinity and 12. So and indeed when I come here with uh, 8, root.element 8 is not less than infinity and 8 is not bigger than 12 so it is good I am okay with 8 it survives it however 
uh, creates another query like is this not okay in other words is the subtree rooted at this node is binary subtree so to go there it will again the minimum can be anything because I'm going to left again I'm going to left but the maximum can be at most 8 so at this iteration root dot element is 8 so I can put 7 here but I can put 9 here also let's do the right subtree so this is more interesting because I will lose the infinity here so again I am in this call where root is 8 its interval was minus infinity and 12 at this current iteration recursion so is the right subtree BST so to ans answer that question I will send this information so this guy has a lower bound now because since it is the right child of something this child cannot be less than that right child that, that parent so I will feed 8 here as the lower bound meaning that I can't allow 7 or 6 here but I can allow 8, 9, 10 etc not etc actually because uh, it will also have an upper bound which is the range max remember range max was 12 when I was processing this node so max is 12 12 and minimum is 8 which was the element value so in other words when I begin the iteration, let me begin here, with 10, okay, the minimum will be 8 and the max will be 12 because of the recursion rule so far. And 10 will survive these rules because 10 is not less than minimum and 10 is not max than 12. So it survives. However, if I had 100 here, then what would happen? Uh, so it was 100. Then 100. Is it less than 8? No. Okay, so no problem here. But 100 is bigger than 12. So true. So return false. This binary, this binary tree is not a binary search tree because I can't... Uh, allow a 100 at this node because the root is 12 100 should be in the right hand side of 12 okay we can also combine these two uh, functions uh, to answer uh, the question of is the given binary tree an AVL tree or not okay so it's a good application of these two solutions we have discussed so far uh, basically to verify that a tree is AVL you need to verify that it's binary search tree so you should call this function uh, with the initial flexible range and you should also verify that this uh, given tree is balanced if those two are all true then you are good and you have an AVL tree which you don't have in this example. So this example will survive this test because it's a binary search tree but it will fail this test because it is not balanced. It will give an error at this node actually. Okay, uh, so with all the examples and everything we have finished our discussion on the AVL tree which is a self-balancing binary search tree. It is very useful because it has a nice theoretic bound upper bound on the height of the uh, binary tree which is log n so in the worst case all your operations will boil down to log n time uh, which is a perfect situation uh, and ther therefore basically in all the libraries that you use the template the STL in C++ for instance you are using a self-balancing binary search tree in the background not a regular binary search tree okay uh, and an alternative to the AVL tree would be red black tree. It is as popular as the AVL, but we have uh, gone with the AVL tree. So, uh, yeah, okay, so with that, I will stop. Thanks, goodbye.